on Curiosity Stream, he allows them their riches. Putin has to be the richest of the rich. In exchange for their loyalty. The oligarchs have supported someone for president that they underestimate. The illicit affair between Russia's elite and the man who rules them on Putin and the oligarchs. And World War II Normandy. An obscure battle training session takes a tragic turn. Uncover the one secret military catastrophe on the secret D-Day disaster. Watch now on Curiosity Stream. Annual plans are $20, just $1.67 a month. Visit CuriosityStream.com. That's 412-838-4639. KDK FM HD1 Pittsburgh. From the Bet Parks Casino and Sportsbook App Studios. An Odyssey Station. Dylan Peters, a late replacement for Bryce Wilson. Not sure what's going on with him tonight, although Cole Tucker, Brian Reynolds, already on the COVID list for the Pirates as they try to beat Milwaukee tonight. They're 0-4 against the Brewers this season. Headlines powered by Bowser. This is the Cook and Joe Show. Ron Cook and Joe Starkey. Sports Radio 93.7, The Fan. Bowser being Pittsburgh's Chevy headquarters. Ron, we have a couple of cheating stories, and there's nothing quite like a good cheating story, whether it's the Patriots or the Astros or the Red Sox or whoever it might be. I like them. Seems to me that people like them, and now it's Garrett Cole at the center of a storm, and then there's a separate Yankees cheating story, by the way. Garrett Cole. What an interesting topic he is. He was really good for a couple of years here, was a Cy Young finalist or was in the running one year for the Cy Young. Then he sort of faded, got injured a little bit in his final year or two here. He was a good strikeout pitcher here. Then he went to Houston and the Yankees and became One of the world's richest human beings. One of the greatest strikeout pitchers in the history of baseball. And one of the world's richest human beings. One led to the other. Right. You're right. Because the guy who left Pittsburgh was not going to be one of the richest people in baseball history. The guy that started striking out people at a rate that only the likes of Randy Johnson and Roger Clemens ever have, ever have, that guy became, what, a $400 million man? I think something along those lines. Early last season, he admitted to using spider tax, so he admitted to cheating, all but admitted in his news conference. And suddenly, with the spider tax crackdown, Garrett Cole's numbers went up. He got blown up in a playoff game. He got blown up early this season and didn't do so well down the stretch last year. Had some good starts, but look look at the numbers. He had something like a six and a half ERA in his last nine starts going dating back to last season, going into this last one. And I'll read you this story. He went six and two-thirds, four hits, one walk in his first decision of the season, first win of the season. Pitched pretty well. However, one specific video posted to social media had many believing Cole was cheating, while others believed there was nothing wrong. The video shows him seemingly grabbing at his right quad after a pitch. His right quad, looking a bit discolored from his white pinstripe baseball pants, Seemingly had some sort of dirt or substance in the area. Had more than half a million views. Cole was asked about the biggest difference between this one and all the others lately. And he said, probably just a better self-talk out there. Just a little more aware of the situation. I don't don't understand. Could the umpires not see anything on his pants? I don't know. They check his hands and glove every every half or all the time. Hands and glove aren't pants. No, but I mean, if if you see a spot on somebody's pants that maybe, you know, it isn't in a certain area and isn't a a certain thing, an unusual spot, don't you check that as an umpire? You'd think, although it seems like they become a little lax. If you ever watch one of those uh, alleged shakedowns, yeah, they, I'm wondering, I'm wondering about Garrett Cole. I'm convinced that Garrett Cole cheated to get where he was as far as all time strikeout kings go. He basically admitted it. How am I not supposed to think that? And and I wonder, and the numbers since then tell a hell of a story, don't they? Well, you know, now it's interesting. Didn't they, they wanted to try to crack down on all the offense in baseball by eliminating this spider tag. Yeah. Now the runs and home runs are way down this year. People are, are having, uh, you know, 
anxiety attacks because runs and home runs are done. What does that Have mean? Have guys found a way around it to cheat again? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But I, I, I'm for me, Garrett Cole does not get the benefit of the doubt. What about for you? Thoughts on Cole? Well, he doesn't. I mean, I, I saw his – he was asked about it last year, that spider attack, and his – his interview was almost uncomfortable to watch. He was squirming, you know? Yes. I, I don't think he wanted to flat out lie, but he didn't want to come clean. There's no doubt he used that stuff. Um, so I, I, it, it'd be pretty hard for me to give him the benefit of the doubt. Man, his next start is going to be interesting, I'll tell you that, and pretty much everyone after that. All right. Oh, he's going to be under scrutiny forever. Now we move to the Yankees and whether they should be mentioned in the same breath as the Astros, the great cheaters, and even the Red Sox. Uh, They were discovered through this letter that uh, a Rob Manfred letter to the Yankees that became um, published the other day that the team's players watched the monitors, team, you know, television monitors in 15 and 16 to discern pitch sequence information that was relayed to base runners. Former Yankees pitching coach Larry Rothschild called the replay room to ask about pitch identification, which was against the rules. However, as MLB said in a statement yesterday, at that time, use of the replay room to decode signs was not expressly prohibited by MLB rules as long as the info was not communicated electronically to the dugout. Well, I just told you it may have been with Larry Rothschild, but I still look at this one as lesser me too. Because it it was before Manfred said absolutely no more of this, and, and Houston violated it after that. So did Boston. Boston did too. No, I'm with you 100. percent Every every team is looking for every edge it can get, and if it's not specifically against the rules, they're going to do it. So I wonder if other teams were doing it. Um, to me, it one of the big parts of the reason the Astros. And, and Red Sox were so culpable is they violated the rule. They, I mean, they just flat out, here's a letter saying don't do it. They did it anyway. Exactly. That makes it worse to me. Is the Astros World Series title tarnished because of this? For me, it absolutely is. I, I can't help but look back at it. And, and, and when we say, we've had this discussion. You know, when Altuve apparently had stuff on his chest and it's a – game-winning home run, you know, I don't know. We, we've we had this conversation with college sports, and I think we differ to where I, I think these things are tainted when you're, when you're convicted, convicted of cheating. But I also, I hear your point when you say nobody cares, nobody looks back on this and, and says, you know, anything. The fan base was, well, they don't care. But I feel like the Astros, Ron, everybody looks back on that and says, yeah, they didn't really win. They cheated. And there's some of that with the Patriots, too, honestly. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't look I don't look at it quite that way, but I certainly can understand that. Um, you know, I just look back. The Astros won that title. Does it, does it have an asterisk next to it? I guess if you want it to. Um, I, I just think after the fact, you can't take it away from them. It depends on each person how they look at it. If I think you, if you can. want to say it's cheating. I can't argue with that. I think you can take it away, and I think they should have taken away their World Series title for blatant cheating that just they were convicted blank, of. Just leave it yes. vacant. Yes. I don't know. I, I don't give to. it to the other team, but because you don't know if the other team would have won, but leave it blank. I think in extreme cases of obvious on-field cheating like that. I think I think it's perfectly reasonable to strip a team of a title. I get that. Believe me, I do. I, I just I wouldn't go there. That's just me. Would you? At 412-928-9370. That's 928-9370. What do you make of these cheating stories? Would you strip a team of a title? We're still waiting on Kansas, right? They're not going to strip it, though. They're not going to take their title. They may end up firing the coach. Uh, That's know. off the table. Yeah, I they, think they won't take. I think this is before they've done that to others. Uh, yeah, but I don't. I th- thought I read somewhere that either this stuff happened way long ago. That's taken them so long to investigate that they won't take it away from this year's team. Well, that's good for Bill Self. It is. I oh, suppose. he may end up losing his job over it, but he's still going to be the two-time national champion.
Plus, with this other baseball one, people hate the Yankees. But I honestly believe that in this situation, the Yankees, while they clearly cheated, uh, it was not on the level of the Astros or Red Sox. It was not violating specifically the rule. That makes it a difference for me. Meantime, what was the other? I had another story in my mind, and it just slipped my mind, Ron. Can you find it? You're worried about golf. You're worried about getting out with Jay. Now, what do he say? Ten rounds of fifty-two will get you out with him. Ten rounds of fifty-two. Although or he better. did have a caveat that he's checking with Pompeiani about what might be the legitimacy of this round, and yeah. Pompeiani slandering you left and right. I've got to get to Pompeiani. There, he's doing worse to you than HBO did to Jerry West. You're right. This is slander. I it's could sue slander. him, Ron. You should. If I have, if I can get my sources on the record, I may sue Pomp. Should I? He's damaging your integrity and, and your, your reputation. You know, your, your reputation. Yeah, he is. Another baseball story. Joe West, Cowboy Joe. The Cowboy. I used to hang out at the Park House on the north side. It was kind of the newspaper hangout. We'd all go there after games or deadline. And the Cowboy, A, would be on the jukebox, his music. He, he was a he was singer. And he'd come in there and show up, too. And it was pretty cool to someone say, hey, Cowboy, we're going to put your song on. And he'd just beam, you know. Did you cowboy. ever talk to him about baseball? I don't think I ever did, no. I, it was one of those situations, you know, you, he's out to relax. He doesn't want to talk to me about, well, you got, you know, you, you got the hottest temper in the league. I didn't feel like going there. Anything else, though? Did you ever interact, say hello? I just, I was there. Yeah, I probably said hello. Probably said, hey, enjoy your music, even though I didn't. You know, tried to be polite. Who else would be at these post-game sessions, Ron? Gene Collier? Oh, Steve yeah. Steve Blass? Misek. Uh, you know, it, it just, that was where we hung out. That's all. It was just the place. Paul Meyer? Uh, I think he might have been in there a few times. Paul was more of a home guy, though. Yeah. He had the fridge stocked, he had ready the, to go? He had the fridge stocked. Starting lineup? Uh, the, the bartender was George Ift. I-F-F-T, I want to say. Pretty well-known local bartender. Was a great guy, George. Those were the days, huh? Those were the, the post-game days. revelry. Steve Halvonic was in there. Uh, there were a few, a few of us in there. I used to enjoy when I was on the road as a Penguins beat writer, going out as a group. It was fun. Now, you were know? you drinking then or not? No, but it was fun to be in another city with a bunch of people, then younger like myself at the time. And just go out on the road, Ron. It was it was incredible. I've told you this story before. When I went to spring training in 97, I was, what, 31 or something? And there I am at, at Anna Maria Island or whatever it's called. Oh, uh, Anna Maria Island, Holmes Beach. And Bradenton, wherever I was, a buddy of mine had a convertible, met him down in Florida. I was with my girlfriend at the time. And we were driving around Florida, going out to dinner. I kept saying, I can't believe this is my job. I'm going to go into a baseball clubhouse tomorrow, write a story. Then I'm going to go to the beach. Then I'm going to have dinner paid for. What's going on here? You can be in your shorts. How did this happen? I know. I love those times. So did I. I I went every year for a whole bunch of years. Now I haven't been there in 25 years. Yeah, it's, it's no fun anymore for me. I know. For what we do, first of all. Yeah. We write opinion. Okay, I don't want to go to Florida and bury them before they start. Yeah. Say they're going to stink. They're going to lose 100 games before they even get started. I don't want to do that. But I also don't want to go down there and say, this guy's great. This guy's great. It's going to be great. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. I don't want to kiss their behinds when I know it isn't true. So I feel like I'm in a bad spot there. So I choose not to go. Why not just go down, write an 11-inch column on anything, and then go to the beach, beer, golf, and food? I have too much pride and integrity. You clearly have no integrity, as Pompeiani, <laughs> That's what Pomp says. As Pompeiani is pointing out. That's I, what Pomp will tell you. I am you. not going to go down there and not do a good job. I didn't say the 11-inch column wouldn't be a thing uh-huh. of beauty, Ron. Did I? So that's why, I mean, I, I've been asked, Yeah, you, you want to go to spring training this year? No, I don't. I don't, because I think they're going to stink. And I don't want to bury them before they start. Maybe in 2027 when Maybe. they win the series, you can go. Maybe. Joe West said these robots. Well, yeah, the cowboy. We got off of that. These go robot ahead. umps aren't accurate either, he claims. 
Not I bet as accurate better than Angel Hernandez. I bet they are better than him. He said the problem with robotic umpires, he told Maggie and Perloff yesterday, is it's not as accurate as making it out to be. They grade these major league umpires and every pitch they call, they grade them with a triangulation of scopes. Did you know that, Ron? Of course, everybody does. So they can tell if the ball's over the plate, low, high. Each umpire is graded, given a score at the end of the game. We don't have an umpire who scored less than 95% over the past four, four years. So claims Cowboy Joe. I don't, you, you telling me Angel Hernandez? Is- oh, then he comes back and says there's a couple that are off a little bit, he says. But 95% is well above the average. And the robotic umpires, it's proven they miss 7% of the pitches. You believe him? Uh, maybe, but uh, and I, I don't know that I think that many guys – uh, you know, uh, Hernandez, for instance, I, I would be acceptable with 95%. I think that's a pretty good percentage for these guys. Now, what did they say? Hernandez was the other day, 82 or 81 or 83? Something like that. That's yeah, ridiculous. 85, maybe. That's ridiculous. I, I don't think the, the, the uh, robotic umpires are perfect. I don't think they're going to be perfect. But I don't it, believe that major league umpires are ninety five percent correct. I, I would have to be, I would have to see more evidence of that. A few, some probably are. But again, doesn't it come down to consistency? That's yes. all they want. If Angel Hernandez is calling a pitch two inches on the outside a strike, if he does it for every pitcher, the hitters adjust. But if he calls it a a b, uh, you know, one guy a, a ball, the next guy a strike, that's what they hate. I've watched. A lot of baseball games with the with the tracker, the computer tracker of the strike right, zone. The square. The and rectangle. I and I, I often think to myself, why am I is this just the gospel truth? Like what I, don't we have to know what mechanism the is angle the, of yeah, it? the angle, everything else. I, I just take it as oh, that pitch must have missed by a tiny, tiny bit because that pitch tracker says so. Right. I, I don't know. Is it true or not? I don't know. Is it true on every single pitch? Here's what else I wonder, Ron. When the ball hits the front of the plate, is that where it's measured from? When it hits the front of the you plate? Know, as far as height and uh, height. Yes, up and because down you goes. see a lot of balls Old dive dip. after that. Right. You yeah, know, I think go, it, I out, think, go I think, outside a I little think it's or inside? To be, you know, I guess it's each umpire's job. Is it the front of the plate that's the key? A, I would say it's the front of the plate. I often wonder about that, too, as I'm watching a baseball well, game. The next time I'm having a beer with a cowboy, I'll ask him. Was that pitch that I just saw a strike? When it when it when it broke the plane of the plate line, I'll say, Ron, was it a strike then? And then did it disappear, go out, in, up, down, whatever, and become a ball? That's these are the things I wonder about. Interesting point. Thank you, Ron. Did you sleep in that last night? By the way, no, it's a little uncomfortable to okay. sleep in. Okay. Did you sleep naked again? Uh, you're rather personal, aren't you? Ah, uh, you've answered kind it before. Kind of a nosy. No nosy question. And I never confirmed I routinely sleep in the nude. Sporadically. Hey, yeah, yeah, sporadically. In the summer. Better. Maybe my tidy whiteies. That might Horse be sleeps with just a leaf around him. Tidy whiteies. Did you know that? That's all. Yeah. Just a uh, leaf. But I don't need anything like socks or sweatpants or I know. a shirt. Especially in the I, summer. I am so, I was so slept, I, I was so nice to come home. I come home from the hockey game. I got home about quarter to one last night. And uh, my room was freezing. I love that. So I haven't put the air on yet. I think this next heat wave, I'm going to have to put it on. Were you aware of horses' habit? He's like a biblical character. He sleeps with only an oak leaf yeah, around yeah. him. He is a biblical character. What do you make of that, Ron? Uh, he can do whatever he wants. Horse? Is that comfortable? Very. As long as the leaf is not poison ivy. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter got sunburned the other day at a softball game. She didn't put any sunscreen on and had some kind of lotion that she used in the morning oh, on her man. arms, and now her arms look like, like the elephant man or something. Peeling. It's unbelievable. No, they're bubbling over. I had yeah. to take her into yesterday. you got to be careful with the sun, it's unbelievable. early. Ron, how about a little mailbag next? We haven't talked about a mailbag in two weeks, and I think the populace has been missing out on this, don't you? I also have some prop bets on the uh, NFL draft. Can we do that at 45, Ron? Sure. At 40? Sure. Why don't we do that? I want to get to those prop bets. I did a mailbag the other day. Is Jordan Davis the Steelers' dream pick? And this led to a lot of what I thought were very insightful questions. Should the Penguins try to re-sign Raquel? 
And this from our friend Mulsey. Ready to put some thought into this, Ron? Yep. I need your full and undivided attention. I'm here. What is the most overrated, iconic play in sports history? Mulsey says it's a close race between Jordan's hand switch layup and Bobby Orr's, quote, flying goal. The most overrated, iconic play in sports history. You won't believe what some people said. It'll make the locals angry. Oh, I'll yeah, give you I time to think I about know that, what Ron. one of them might be. I'll give you time to think about that, and we shall talk about that coming up on Cook and Joe. You can watch live video. Ron, I thought the mailbag was unusually well done this week. And I don't mean by me. It's all about the questions. And I thought the questions were fabulous. May I run a few by you? Yeah, we haven't done this, I think, for a week or two. That's because the questions haven't been good enough, Ron. They didn't meet your high standards. This week they were. So let's get to some of them, shall we? Will the Penguins re-sign Raquel? Should they try? Sure. Should try. I don't know that that necessarily means they will. Um, I I just think there's going to be some turnover, especially if they go out in the first round quickly. Choose between Rust and Raquel. Oh, boy. Those two. And let me tell you this first round. That's a hard one. It is. Listen to this. One's 30, about to turn. The other's about to turn 29. That's Raquel. Goals per game in their career. Rust, 0.29. Raquel, 0.28. Points per game in their career. Rust, 0.64. Raquel, 0.62. And their cap hit right now is virtually identical. Choose between them, Ron. I would probably keep I would probably keep Rust if I could over those two. Although Rust again, no points in eight games. He's not exactly helping his marketability here with this little slide at the end of the year. Um, I, you know, I, I, he's comfortable with Sid. There, Sid's comfortable with him. Um, I would probably try to keep him. Uh, you know, I'd make offers to both, and you know, hope for one of them takes it. But I would hope that it would be Rust. How many wins? Asks. Brian Ross. You didn't the, answer the question yourself. I'm letting you answer him today, Ron. I don't feel like it. How many wins for the Pirates will leave you impressed this season? Again, it depends what happens with these young guys. I think you made that point right from the start. Uh, if the young guys come up here and show you something, even maybe in losses, but I mean, if I'm going to put a strict win on it, what they win last year? 61. 61 and 101, I think they were last year. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see 70 and 92. That would be a significant improvement, I think. Matt R., why won't Ron Cook let you play the Buffalo's Got a Spirit song on your show? Because it's ridiculous. It's ridiculously done. It sounds horrendous, and it's not a Buffalo show here. (laughs) I said because he's mean. Give it to us straight, Joe. How much of a chance do the Penguins have in the playoffs? I'll say give it to us straight, it, Ron. Give, that was, question was directed at you. All of them were, Ron. It's my mailbag. What chance do they have in the playoffs? Uh, you know, am I going to put a percent on coming out of the to first? Get to, the, to get out of the East. That's what I heard it I, as. I would say zero chance. No, I shouldn't say that. Five to ten percent chance of getting out of the East. Minimal chance. Uh, I think it's not not even a 50% chance they get out of the first round. I think it's less than that. I don't like the way they're playing. I don't like the fact that Jari is hurt. Um, it just, it's ugly it out just, there. ain't it, it? It's really bad right now. Now, like Caulfield said, and, and Sullivan said it last night, confidence is fleeting. You can get it back as soon as you, as quickly as you lose it. I don't know about that, but I'm not totally writing off a Sidney Crosby team, but, I don't like their chances. The best question of the week came from our dear friend and compatriot, Mulsey. What is the most overrated, iconic play in sports history? I'd say it's a close race between Jordan's hand switch layup. I don't know what that is. It's the famous one where he goes up with the left hand, switches to the right hand against the Lakers while he's in midair and flips it in. And Bobby Orr's flying goal. Let me read you some other ones, Ron. 
of it's unbelievable the things people mine, said. I can't get mine off the top before you answer. No, I want to give you some other ones, and then so you have these in mind but be, what before you go. What if I pick go. one that you tell me? That'll be something, won't it? Okay. Vince Pallotta, Bobby Thompson's home run. Giants win the pennant, big deal. Adam Gretz, he agrees with Malsey. Dick Tarnstrom's biggest fan, he calls himself, this guy. I still think the Immaculate Reception is cool, but I was very disappointed when I learned it was the first playoff game that the Steelers ever had, and they didn't win the Super Bowl that year. I think the cool nickname does a lot of the heavy lifting there. John Van Dyne, Derek Jeter's dive into the stands against the Red Sox. Classic. Randy Diffendahl, Kirk Gibson's pinch hit home run off Eckersley. Big whoop, he says. Oh, my God. J.R., Jordan dunking from the foul line when he clearly steps past the line. And then finally, uh, Maurice Franz, Philly special, and I'm an Eagles fan. Oh, no, here's one. Doug Galassi. Maybe the catch? Dwight Clark. Maybe it's just the angle, but I never thought Clark jumped all that high. Ron, this is a tough crowd. It is a tough crowd. Well, you know what I would say overrated play was? Bill Buckner's error. Guy made an I error. Like that. On, er, guy made an error on a ground ball. His team still had a chance to win the next day. Um, guys make errors, and all it only the time. tied the game. And it, it, it uh, right? Am I right about that? No, I think it came around and scored the winning run on that. Right? I'm pretty sure. I can still see it was a Mookie. Oh yeah, Wilson. you're right. You're right. Yeah. It was the um, winning run. It was the winning run. I I, I I mean I get it. The guy was a pariah in Boston for basically the rest of his life until they finally did win a championship, I thought that was a very overrated play. He was a good player and a good defensive player. He just made an error. It happens. I love the twist that you put on that. You took an iconic bad play and made it overrated. Right. I like that, Ron. So these other ones were mostly good plays, right? All of them. When you think iconic, you think good. But I, I actually really like the twist that you put on that. That's the first one that came to my mind. You know what, my you know what, my horse? Go ahead, please. What about the over-the-top follow-through of Malsey's ninth straight three-pointer? <laughs> That's actually pretty good. Uh, yes, that one's up there for sure. You want to know what my three were, Ron? Sure. Are you interested in Absolutely that? Absolutely, I am. The first one was John Elway's 98-yard drive because it was only the Browns. <laughs> um, the second one, let me think here, was Brandy Chastain's penalty kick goal. Remember that? The famous penalty I kick do. goal. And she tore off her sports jersey. She did. Was left with her sports bra. Yes, that was iconic. Ron, I've scored on a penalty kick before. Come on. I scored on a penalty kick not against a guy who was trying out for the River Not in front of 100,000 at the Rose Bowl with the World Cup on the line. It was a penalty kick. And the other one was Doug Flutie's Hail Mary against Miami. And I'm a Flutie guy. You won't find a bigger Flutie guy than me. But that was total luck. He just heaved the ball into the end zone, Ron, and the guy caught it. The Miami guy missed the play. Total luck. It is. It is. I, 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 Thoughts on any and all it, of those? Brandy Chastain's was a pretty significant play, even if it was just a penalty kick. So I was that ball. So cr- was the ball that rolled through the first baseman's uh, leg to lose Game Six of the World Series. All right, enough. We got your song of the day coming up here. We remembered it. Today. It wasn't whether all these plays were significant. That's why they're iconic plays. The question That's is, true. was the play itself overrated? And my opinion, the Buck, uh, Buckner play was Brandy Chastain. No. Thank you, Ron. We got your song coming How up. How about the Kirk Gibson home run? See, I thought that was an incredible moment because he couldn't hobble around the bases. Plus, I was, was drunk. Off, it was off a Hall of Fame pitcher. And maybe the best pitcher going at that time in Dennis Eck, Eckersley. I know. What is this guy talking about? I don't know. I can still see that fat Tommy. Where were you when it happened? That fat Tommy Lasorda running out yeah. of the dugout to Waddling. celebrate with him. Um, I don't remember where I was. I was not there. I was drunk in my bed in Buffalo in my apartment at 144 Englewood Avenue watching on a little black and white TV. Girlfriend Marlene was asleep. I was watching did the you, game. Did your yelp of uh, joy or disbelief oh, wake her up? It was one of the most incredible. It's definitely not overrated. Whatever I can tell happened you to that. Marlene? Uh, she she you? joined the Peace Corps. She dumped you? Yeah. yeah. I got to know Kevin, uh, 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 Kirk Gibson later because he played with the Pirates. 
Was he a bitter man, Ron? He was not a sweet man at yeah, all. He seemed was a little not, bitter. He was not a sweet man. What about the other ones? What about the catch, Dwight Clark? That wasn't overrated. This guy's lost his mind. Somebody else said that catch happens every week in the NFL. What? Not with the game on the line. I or the game off the playoff line. Playoff game on the line. Any other thoughts, Ron? That's it. That's we're past it. our time. I want to hear your song. Oh, no, screw the time, Ron. We're talking about something interesting. You just want to get to your topic. What is it? I don't even know. Don't you promised something at twelve forty. Oh, the Super Bowl. Uh, Super Bowl. I do want to get to that. The draft. The draft props. props. Yeah, yeah. Super Give me Bowl. an example. Well, Give so me an example of something I can think of during the break. Uh, here. Who's the number one pick? Hug first. What color tie is he going to be wearing? A tie. Uh, how many Alabama players go in the first? How round? long is the first Goodell hug? How about it, that, that one? That one could be another one. All right, Ron. We'll do that coming up. You can listen to Cook and Joe every Wednesday to hear about Starkey's card of the week from the baseball card castle in Cranberry every Wednesday through Friday noon, 93.7thefan.com's contesting page. And you can watch live video of the mayhem in here. Ron, there was a UPS guy who just came in, delivered a package to the front desk. It's got baseball cards in it or what? No. Recognized my voice. Said, I love you guys. I love it when Cook gets after you, he said. I never I get after you. I love it when Cook one gets after you. I'm the punching bag. You just bag. did get after me. I'm you the, get after me all the time. I'm the punching bag that takes one blow oh, after another. Please. From you. Of course. This guy rips me to shreds every day. You agree? Horse? I mean, not every day. Every other day. We'll get to Ron's props next. On Cooking Joe. Now, this is your song of the day. I don't know that I've ever heard this before. What is this song? Fleetwood Mac, Ron, another great example of Lindsey Buckingham's underrated guitar style that he played. He played a team game, Ron. He doesn't have to go off on tangents and score 50. He can't even he get just interviewed. Wa- he does what needs to be done to he win the game. can't even be interviewed on what up with that. Listen to the harmonizing. Turn it up a little, horse. Christine McVie, Stevie Nicks. Everybody playing for the team, even though they were all sleeping you with know, each other. You know, I know a guy who traveled with them. What? And you know him too, Jeff Butya, Penn State Rudy that owns the yes uh, uh, the uh, All Star Sports Grill in Robinson. A real good buddy. He knew them. I think he was a stagehand or something for them. He knows Stevie Nicks very well. Holy horse milk! So, they had they had there was some bitterness there because one was dating the other, then that one was dating this one. I and, never ask uh, him about the intricacies of the romances involved. Well, that's half I just the story with him, Fleetwood Mac. I just remember him telling me that he knew Does he still very, work there, still own the place? He still, he still runs the I'm place. I'm driving over there today on my way to pick up my daughter. You know where it is. All right, the stuff. right in yeah. the Robinson It's little not far mother. from where she goes to school. I think you should ask for him. He's there I know constantly. him. He already knows me. We've talked hey, about Pitt, Penn State, well, we, everything else. We've talked about you quite often. I mean, don't ask him what I've said. but So he was, wait, what did he do? A road manager type thing? He was something with them. I don't wow. know for sure. I've got to talk she to was, him. He, he was going to go. Uh, he had mentioned going when she, one of the times. I think she's in the Hall of Fame a couple of t- different times. And uh, he was going to go to the induction. And he invited me to go with him. And I couldn't go. Ron, you have some props for me, don't I you? I do. Now you got to get That was time. our song of the day, by the way. That was a good one. Thank o- you. Hold on. I got to find him now. I All thought right. it was a great one, actually. This this is some pretty good ones here. Horse, did you know I was in the Stevie Nicks fan club as a youth? I'm I'm dead serious about that. It this was called is, Sorceress Enterprises. This is one of my favorites, Joe. Yes. You're a dog man. Happy as dogs can be. Yes, I am. How many dogs will be shown during round one commercials? Uh, commercials do not count. So how many dogs, like if they draft Kenny Pickett and he's in his mother's house, is there going to be a dog when they show him on TV? Nobody will top Belichick's dog. Over or under two and a half. Remember Belichick's dog alone at the kitchen table? I do, on his computer. Yeah, nothing could top that. But You know what the dog's name was? I think it was Nike. Cheater? It? I don't know. <laughs> Nike, I think. I'm going to go over, uh, way over. Two Are you kidding half. me? Over. 
Okay, this doesn't count commercials. I know, it's people's houses. All right, how many round one draftees will be wearing glasses? Over, under, nine and a half. See, here's, here's the situation, Ron. People wear glasses these days when they don't even need them. I just All saw right. Donnie Football. You know him? Uh, sort of. Yeah, the producer from the Mulsey and Pony Show. He's become real big. He's too big for me. Too big he, for he the people. He walks by yeah. without saying hello. A Does lot he of, really? Oh, yeah. He's a very, lot of the people at Waynesburg, where I taught, say the same thing, that he, Donnie's changed. He's very big. Here's a signal of that, a sign of that. Donnie had glasses on. I said, where'd you get the glasses? He said, I don't really need them. I'm just wearing them. All right, he's so one say of these over wear, or under nine and a half. He's one of these wear the glasses just to wear glasses so, guys. Yeah, uh, no, I can't People them, do it to I be stylish. I, That's my point. I can't. I have to see. Over or under nine and a half? Over, because everybody wears them even when they don't How need them. How many in round one will have a tie? Over or under 19 and a half? Don't they all have ties on draft day? I don't think so. No, you're right if they're at their houses. Who, I, who will be traded first? Though? I didn't even say under over yet for that ties. Ron. Because you go Can off on talk? tangents. Uh, yeah, do you just want me to give numbers and we go to the I next want you, one? I'm just Four, saying, yeah, three, let's go yes one, or no. Yes over, or no. Under. It's going to be under because people like Kenny Pickett won't even be there. Some of the guys who you'd think would be but there won't still be. be in the, on the cameras will be in their they, living room. But in their living room, they're not going to wear a tie. Okay. You sleep naked. By the way, somebody tweeted us and said there was once a promo where Ron was quoted as saying, I, and I quote, always sleep naked. Uh, now you're I, you're going back on I that. Don't, I don't remember that. Do you remember that, I horse? I do not. I do not. Do you remember a sudden slam dunk of the old I sleep naked thing? Always being the key word. That's Ron? one famous Seinfeld, you know, he says he likes nothing between his boys, as he called them, in the free world or something. All right. Uh, who will be traded first on draft day? Baker Mayfield, Jimmy Garoppolo, Debo Samuel, mm. A.J. Brown, D.K. Metcalf. Wow, what a list. I think Debo Samuel. I think it's pretty clear he doesn't want to play. They've come out and said, oh, we're wouldn't even think of trading him. Well, you would if the package is right, and it will be right from the Jets, and that's going to happen. Total trades in round one on draft day, over, under, two and a half. Including the Steelers moving up for Malik Willis? Over, under, two and a half. Over. Uh, Will there be a trade in the top ten picks? Yes, it'll be the Jets for Debo Samuel. Okay, number one overall selection. Now Trayvon Walker, as Chelsea Messenger told us today. Uh... Okay, who will number one hug first? Dad, mom, sibling, friend, girlfriend, agent. Mom. Dad is the favorite. Really? Yeah. Because it's Watson? I don't know. Will he cry? Yes or no? Yes. He'll cry like Uh, you did. Which team will draft Kenny Pickett? Odds favor Carolina, then the Saints, then the Steelers. Carolina. You think so too? Yeah, probably. Um, Malik Willis, Steelers favored to draft him. Saints, Panthers. Steelers at 20. Do you like that call, Ron? Draft picks by conference, Mm -hmm. most in the first round. Uh, Big, what's it say, Big 10 minus one. I don't get this. Alabama, well, Alabama and Georgia have more than any other conference. Yes. My God, Georgia has three defensive linemen. Total Alabama players drafted in round one, over under two. Ron, I'd have to take a closer look at that. I mean, I don't, I don't have all this. St- I don't know everybody who's eligible oh, yeah, for the first it's, it's, round oh, off the it's, top it's, of my it's, head. It's, I don't have a list in front of me. All you got to do is look it up. You told me that about. I know I have a Neil and I know the every, wide receiver. When I said I don't know the what the Baltimore wide receiver. When I say I don't know what the Baltimore Ravens offensive guard did from the 2012 draft, you go go online. You can check it out. Do the research. They suck, Ron. Total Georgia players drafted in round one. <laughs> Over <laughs> under three and a half. <laughs> Three and a half. Turn it up, horse. Ron took a liking to Fleetwood Mac, didn't he? Little crush on Stevie Nicks. Sorceress Enterprises. They used to send us posters of Stevie. Little sayings. You'd get it like a witch's medallion. I might have been the only guy in the Stevie Nicks fan club. Ron, what'd you have for me? (laughs) Ron is perturbed. Oh, not again. Oh, no. 
Man, you have been here like 20 times. I feel <laughs> terrible. Lindsay, man, I made you a promise and I broke it again. You gotta forgive me. Is that Buckingham? No, don't go, Lindsay. Don't go. Now, that's the last time. This will never happen again. Come on, man. Hey, let me know we cool, Lindsay. Come on now. Let me know we cool. <laughs> there you go, Lindsay Buckingham. That really happened that he kept getting blown off on the show? <laughs> it's not really Lindsey Buckingham, but they, the guy plays him, Lindsey Buckingham. Uh, but that's DeAndre Cole, the host of the show, doesn't ever get around to Lindsey Buckingham. What else you got? All right, we're running out of time, but I got a couple more. These are all conferences. SEC players, first round, over under 10 and a half. Uh, AC, ACC, over. Four and a half, Big Ten, six and a half, blah, blah, blah. Ron, I'd really have to have something in front it. of me to I make an educated I, I, guess there. I, I, then I, I don't have then the I'm sorry. total numbers. I'm Most sorry. of those were good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I let you down. Over, under, on longest Goodell hug. Five well, and a half Mr. seconds. Mr. Irrelevant be an offense or defensive player. I like that one. Patrick Hornquist was once Mr. Irrelevant. Um He'll be an offensive player, Ron, perhaps a long snapper. All right, that's all I got. I like that a lot. Can you get some more for tomorrow? Yeah, I'll probably find some more. Ed Bouchette coming up next. We're going to ask Ed, his greatest guitarist of all time, what he's afraid of, and who he thinks the Steelers will draft in the first round. 